everyone. Welcome to Math Easy. Today we are going to learn about titrations. Now this is a very popular GCSE and IGCSE exam question uh, that you get in your chemistry paper. And um, as a teacher, in my experience, I've seen that sometimes students struggle with this question mainly because they don't understand exactly the point of a titration, like why you do this. So let's have a quick look at uh, why you do this and how you do it and how to do a calculation. Now, the idea behind the titration is to measure the concentration of an unknown solution. Like you know the solution, but you don't know the concentration. Let's think about a practical scenario. Imagine there is a factory, and this factory produces sodium hydroxide as a byproduct. The factory produces something else, but it produces sodium hydroxide as a byproduct. Now we know that sodium hydroxide is a versatile chemical compound, but to make use of it, the factory owner needs to know the concentration of this one because the person has no idea about the concentration of this one. Now to do this, we can use a titration. Now here you can see the practical setup of an um, of a titration experiment. So there's a burette filled with hydrochloric acid. Here's the burette. This we take of known concentration. So how do we get that? It's pretty easy. Just this is from the lab, right? So you take in this example, I've taken 0 0.5 mole per cubic decimeter concentration hydrochloric acid, and then you fill it to the up to the top mark. It is clamped vertically to a retort stand. Then here we have a conical flask. This contains 25 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide solution mixed with a few drops of phenolphthalein indicator. The solution appears pink in alkaline conditions. The burette is positioned above the conical flask, allowing hydrochloric acid to be added slowly to the sodium hydroxide during the titration. A white tile is placed beneath the flask to help observe the color change clearly during the reaction. Because when the reaction is completed, the mixture turns, it goes colorless. So you, we call this the end point. So end point is where the reaction ends. So when all of the uh, sodium hydroxide reacts with hydrochloric acid to turn into sodium chloride and water. So we need to find the exact volume of hydrochloric acid used for this. Now here you can see the balanced chemical equation for this one. Sodium hydroxide combines with hydrochloric acid making sodium chloride and water. So you open the top of the burette and you swirl the conical flask and observe the color. So it will start to go lighter and lighter and at some point it will go colorless. So this is the end point and we stop the, uh, you close the top here and then you need to take the uh, volume of hydrochloric acid. Here is the color change in the diagram. In the alkali solution, it's like pink in color. In an acidic solution, it goes colorless. So that's what you need to look for. Then you need to record the uh, volume of hydrochloric acid use, uh, and you just need to repeat it, say, three times. So in the first time, we got in this example 40.2 cubic centimeters, second one 40.1, third one 40.1. Now we need to calculate the mean of these three. Now to calculate the mean, what you need to do is Add the three values 40.2, 40.1, and 40.1, and divide it by three. Now, when you do that, um, you get 40.1. Now, you get 40.13 when you actually do the calculation, but you need to look at the actual readings you got. Here, we got it to one decimal place, all of this. So, obviously, you can't call it 40.13. You have to go back to one decimal place. So, the mean volume is 40.1. So we know both volume and concentration. Now easily I can work out the number of moles. So how do we do that? Uh, concentration is number of moles divided by the volume. Number of moles is concentration multiplied by volume. Now you can just plug the values in. 0 0.5 moles per cubic decimeter multiplied by the volume. Now you have to convert cubic centimeters into cubic decimeters. Now we know one cubic decimeter is 1000 cubic centimeters. So 40.1 cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters, you have to divide it by 1000. So let's do that. 40.1 divided by 1000. Now I'm going to use my calculator to find the number of moles of hydrochloric acid in this example. Now, the number of moles of hydrochloric acid here is 0 0.02005. Now, let's look at this balanced chemical equation. And you can see the ratio of sodium hydroxide to hydrogen hydrochloric is one, one is to one. Because this is balanced, 
You need to make sure that it is balanced and is one is to one. So if I have 0 0.02005 moles of hydrochloric acid, obviously the number of moles of sodium hydroxide should also be exactly the same. So 0 0.02005 moles. But the volume of sodium hydroxide we used was 25 cubic centimeters. So let's divide it by 1000 to get it into cubic decimeters. Now I know the volume, I know the number of moles. So finding the concentration of sodium hydroxide, which is our objective in this experiment, is really easy. All I need to do is C is equal to N over V. So when you do the calculation, you get 0 0.8 moles per cubic decimeter. Now, remember the sodium hydroxide solution that we got from the factory with unknown concentration? We just worked out the actual concentration of that to be 0 0.8 moles per cubic decimeter. Here's a question for you to try. It's very similar to the previous question with the same numbers. Please pause the video and give it a click. When you're ready for the answer, please pause it. So the first step is to write the chemical equation. Then you need to make sure that it is balanced. Now we know we've already used this one earlier. This one is naturally balanced, so that's fine. Now let's quickly list the things we have. The volume of the first one, uh, sodium hydroxide, is 30 cubic centimeters divided by 1,000, so you get in cubic decimeters. Concentration is 0 0.15 moles per cubic decimeter. For hydrogen chloride, hydrochloric acid is 25 cubic centimeters. Now, we have both volume and concentration of sodium hydroxide, so let's work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So N is equal to C times V. 0 0.15 multiplied by 30 divided by 1,000 gives you 0 0.0045 moles. Now, because the molar ratio here is 1 is to 1, whatever the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, we have the exact same number of moles of hydrogen hydrochloric. So, the value of N here is 0 0.0045. I know the volume. Let's find the concentration. C is equal to N over V. So the answer is 0.18 moles per cubic decimeter.